So we have our processed before and after images. We have applied a threshold and now we have this orange pixel representing the detection flood area detections. This is good enough, but you can see there are some mistakes that happen in this detection. Uh, there are pixels which are falling in this river area. And maybe that's not really a flood area, right? You can see there are all these pixels here, which are uh, detected as flood, but you know we don't want to consider any water pixel, which is in permanent water body as water. So one of the first things we'll do is we'll mask out pixels falling in uh, permanent vegetation. So let's apply masks. Mask permanent water. You can use any data set. You can take world cover, select water bodies, and say this is permanent water, mask it. Uh, we can also use global surface water, and that gives you a little bit more control how you define water. So here we're going to take global surface water data that we learned in our module two, and we'll use the seasonality band and say any pixel which has water in more than five months a year, that's permanent water. This is appropriate for the region that we're working with. Change it based on the region you're working with or use world cover or any other data set that you get. Let's visualize what the permanent water uh, looks like here. So when you're working on masking, it's very important to visualize the data because that will apply, allow you to apply the mask correctly and you should always check the results. So you can see this is the detections where there are areas uh, which are permanent water. You can adjust it to see if that makes sense for your region or not. We'll change the order of this and see if that uh, shows it correctly. So what we want to do is take any orange pixels that fall over this blue pixels and remove them. So you can see right now that I can see some pixels which are within the river. Now I want to remove them. So we want to mask that area. So we want to mask permanent water. And remember how the mask would be? Pixel values one will be retained and pixel value zero will be removed. So if we say I have this permanent water band and I want to mask this image, the stuff that is one, this is the blue, will be retained, the other thing will be masked. We want the opposite of that, right? We want to retain pixels which are not water. So to create that mask, we have to do the opposite of that. So we'll say my water mask is dot not. So there's a function called not which inverts the image. And this will give you once where there's not water and zero where there's water. And that is useful for as a mask. If we just wanted water, this is fine. One more problem, if I inspect this image, you'll see that this image is pre-masked. You'll see that the you get permanent water and then the rest of it is masked. So I need to unmask this first. So I get one zero and then I invert that image. So you unmask it, you get one zero. This one is, uh, let's just unmask it. So what this is what we want to uh, create. So the default one is not, default one comes with a mask outside certain regions. So where there was never a water that are pre-masked. So we need to unmask it. So we get this, you know, one zero image and then we can invert that. So this is your water image. We want to invert this. So I'm going to call dot not and you'll see what happens to that image. You get the opposite image. And now we can use it as a mask saying that retain everything that is in blue, mask everything that is in white. Okay? So that's why we use this operation. So again, work with this mask visually, get the data loaded and check whether it's happening correctly or not. And now we'll apply our mask. So we'll say, use this permanent water mask. And now when you load this, you'll see there won't be any pixels which are in the permanent water values. 
small thing, but it's useful to kind of get the most accurate result that you uh, can out of this. You can also do this visualization a little better. Let me just do. So you will see this a little better if we add the flooded image in red. So we can now see there are red pixels and yellow pixels. The red one is the final flooded area. The one in orange is the original one. So you'll see some more orange pixels because we had masked out those. You can see now this orange pixels here on my screen where there are no red pixels. Those were masked out for the permanent water. Okay, so that's a first mask. Let's apply the second one. We want to remove pixels, which are more than 5% slope. We want to mask out areas with more than 5% slope. Uh, we'll use the Hydroshades DM. This is the DM that's a process version of SRTM. It's hydrologically conditioned for hydrological analysis. This is more preferred. So we're using this. There are many other DMs available. You can use any of them. We'll show the code. We'll take the hydro sheds, compute the slope, and say all the steep areas are where you have slope greater than 5%. Let's visualize this. So first, we'll visualize the steep areas. And what we want to do is we want to mask out the steep areas. So let's see if uh, what kind of mask we would apply. So all these blue pixels are pixels from the DEM where it is shown that this is these pixels have more than 5% slope. So any red thing that is falling within that, we want to remove. Similar to the previous one, we want to retain stuff that is outside of this. And we want to keep the stuff that is outside of that. So we need to invert our mask. So our mask would be Invert of this, saying that whatever is not in this pixel, retain those. The rest, you can update that. So let's update our mask. And now we'll run this, and you'll see that all the stuff within the blue pixels will be gone. And you will not see those in red. You can see there are no detections over red. Compare that with this thing, we have a lot of extra pixels which were detected. Third and the last one we want to do is remove isolated pixels. We covered this technique during supervised classification for post-processing. Uh, you define a threshold, I want a minimum size cluster of how many pixels. And anything that is not more than that, you can get removed. So we'll say, I want all pixels with at least eight connected pixels to be considered as not uh, flooded areas. And we'll remove the disconnected areas. So first, let's visualize all the areas which are disconnected. So now you'll see all this stuff in yellow. These are all the small clusters. So you can compare this with the initial flood area. All those pixels which are not connected to larger clusters are the ones in yellow. And we can, again, invert this and use it as a mask. So our final flooded area is mask out the invert of that. So you can see we removed quite a bit of area or pixels. And this is important. If you don't do this, you'll have much larger flooded area estimate than what is real. And again, this analysis was validated and the idea that we got was pretty close to what was actually flooded. So again, good starting point. Again, adjustable based on your region and your knowledge of the region of that.
uh, a couple of questions. Uh, what is the slope? Slope means uh, when you have uh, an area which is uh, has a it's not flat. So, for example, in our region, you have a terrain like this, and the idea is that if this is more than five percent, the water will flow away from it. Right? It'll go away. It will not stay on that. So generally, you, you will see flooded regions which are comparatively flat. So again, this is something that is recommended practice by UN Spider that you mask out areas which are on slope. If that's not the case in your region, skip that step. But the idea is anything that has certain slope, water will flow away from it. It will not accumulate that. Uh, there's a question on, uh, can we explain the need for uh, unmask here. Let's do that. So global surface water data has uh, this thing where it creates an image of ones and zeros, but the areas which are never water, they were never detected as water, they mask them out. So you can see the raw data looks like this. If a display, there are permanent water is one, stuff that was sometimes water, but it's not permanent water is zero, and stuff outside that is null. Right? So if I just do this, I'll get a mask which is invert of this, which is what I don't want. Now the same thing, let us me unmask and show you. No other change, I'm just going to say unmask zero. That means unmask all the mask pixels, replace the value with zero. You'll see the difference now. Right? Everything that was outside of this mask is also zero now. And now when we invert it, you get the this stuff in white, this stuff in black. If it did not do this, if I say, if it did not unmask and inverted it, you will see the inverted image only in the small region because rest areas are also masked. So you had to unmask it. This is particularly true about the global surface water data. Most other data sets are not like that. Hope this makes sense. So we don't want this. We want everything else to be considered one and the permanent pixel zero. That's why we have to unmask it. Uh, 